Income tax 2023-2024. Figuring depreciation under maker's introduction. Get ready and some coffee because we need to save some money for vacation with income tax preparation. 2023-2024. Most first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like this cpa thinking cap for example cpa thinking cap you see what we did with like with the letters and this cpa thinking cap is not just for cpas either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. So this information comes from publication 946, how to depreciate property, section 179, deduction, special depreciation allowance, makers, listed property, and more, tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. Sole proprietorship schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting the schedule C itself, basically an income statement. Having business income minus business expenses, which you could call business deductions resulting in, in essence, net business income, which rolls in from the Schedule C to line one income of the formula. The formula outlined in the calculation for Form 1040. This is the first page of the Form 1040, the Schedule fee C ultimately rolling into line eight additional income from schedule one this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part number one additional income schedule c rolling into line three business income or loss this is the schedule c profit or loss from business having an income statement format income minus expenses we're looking at the expenses at this time which usually has the most different kinds of categories within it some being more difficult than others one of those more difficult ones being depreciation where as we saw in prior presentations even if using a cash based system we're often forced to do an accrual thing because the tax code says so putting the depreciable property not on the books as an expense when we incur it or when we pay for it but rather on the books as an asset noting an asset is a balance sheet account this is an income statement report in essence therefore since we don't have a balance sheet account we could just think about the depreciation schedules tracking the balance sheet amounts of the property minus the accumulated depreciation and calculating the depreciation expense for us to take on a year by year basis now note that generally what happens with this business accounting for taxes is that the tax code will borrow from generally accepted accounting principles basically accrual accounting most of the time and then deviate from it from time to time that's basically what they're doing with depreciation the maker's depreciation we can think of as an accelerated depreciation similar to what you would see in normal accounting principles. In other words, it makes sense from a bookkeeping standpoint for the most part. 
and then the tax code often tinkers with it for example with the 179 deduction and the special depreciations which could allow us basically to expense the entire amount of the purchase of equipment when we purchase it which kind of defeats the point of putting it on the books as an asset in the first place so in prior presentations we discussed what might qualify for the 179 deduction and the special depreciation after we consider those items then the basis that we have will usually apply to the maker's depreciation rules which make the most sense from just a normal accrual accounting standpoint and that is what we're looking at at this point in time so figuring depreciation under makers m-a-c-r-s i'm just going to call it makers from going forward the modified accelerated uh, accelerated cost recovery system that's what the m-a-r m-a-c-r-s stands for makers is used to recover the basis of most business and investment property placed in service after 1986. so in other words it's property that we can consider investment property in that when we buy it we're not consuming it at the point in time that we purchase it so if we buy the classic my forklift we buy that forklift we didn't consume it when we purchased it and therefore we're not going to expense it you can think of it as a type of investment although that term can be a little bit confusing because oftentimes when we think of investments for taxes or for bookkeeping what comes to mind first is things like purchasing stocks and bonds for example but in a business sense the investment in equipment is an investment it's going on the books as an asset because that asset is something that we're going to consume over multiple periods into the future in order to help us to generate revenue so makers consist of two depreciation systems the general depreciation system the gds and the alternative depreciation system the ads so this gets a little bit confusing in terms of the categorizations of the depreciation so we'll go over them in some detail but usually you could think of most property as having kind of a default depreciation method that will be used most of the time and i just want to do a quick recap of the incentives here and why the tax code is a little bit different than the generally accepted accounting principles because remember on the generally accepted accounting principles especially for large businesses who are trying to for example uh, trade on the stock exchange and therefore they have regulatory authorities over them and possibly are also getting audited to make sure that they're in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles and so the goal there is to try to format the financial statements in such a way that they're as accurate as possible and consistent with accounting principles so that they can be compared period over period as well as from a company compared to other types uh, of companies and of course the business itself has an incentive to want to do that accurately to maintain trust and so on and also if they're publicly traded to be in compliance with the regulations and they'll be forced to basically do that if they're publicly traded because the audits will force them to do the double the, the same accounting standards so therefore in some cases there's more leeway under generally accepted accounting principles to make estimates with things related to like equipment for example so if i had a piece of equipment if i had my forklift for ten thousand dollars you could say well if it's going to last 10 years then i'll say depreciate it over 10 years the easiest method might be that i take that forklift divide it by 10 depreciate one thousand dollars a year however i could also make the argument of saying hey look i'm going to get more use out of the forklift in year one than year 10 it makes more sense for me to depreciate more of it up front rather than later so i might use an accelerated method such as double declining balance method so our objectives there are usually to be as accurate as possible or ideally that's going to be our objective or possibly the government the these companies want to look better rather than worse obviously on the tax side of things everything's kind of flipped on its head we don't have the same regulatory bodies that are basically making sure that we're in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles and our incentives on our side 
is that we want to depreciate as much upfront as we can to try to lower our taxes because now the expense is good on uh, the tax side of things. So obviously we have an audit uh, by the government that could happen in terms of audits to help keep us honest with that. But we don't have like a yearly audit system as we see with publicly traded companies. So uh, the, the IRS is going to be more stringent about certain types of estimates, meaning when I said it was a 10 year property, they're going to give us less leeway to say whether it's not it's a 10 year property because my incentive is always going to be to have the lower uh, periods to depreciate over to depreciate more upfront. And they're also going to restrict me with the maker's depreciation. I said I wanted a double declining balance because that made the most sense. But they're going to say, well, your tax incentive is to try to have an accelerated depreciation as much as possible to depreciate as much upfront as possible. So they're going to give us less leeway to determine what depreciation methods that we're going to use. So we can expect the tax code to be a little bit more strict in some ways for those reasons. All right. So generally, these systems provide different methods and recovery periods to use in figuring depreciation deductions. Obviously, as well, software helps greatly with us to calculate these depreciation deductions. So this chapter explains how to determine which maker's depreciation system applies to your property. It also discusses other information you need to know before you can figure depreciation under makers. This information includes the property recovery class. So that's going to help us to determine what category it falls in to help us determine the useful life of the property placed in service date. So clearly we need to know when we purchased it in order to help us to calculate how long it's going to last and so on. Uh, basis is kind of like the cost and then the adjusted basis is the cost that's going to be adjusted by other things such as depreciation as time pa passes as well as the applicable recovery period. So the recovery period could be tied to uh, the recovery class, in essence, telling us how long we can depreciate the thing over uh, con convention. So what's going to be the convention that we're going to be using for uh, the depreciation? Uh, a half year convention, mid month convention. These are going to be things that we make assumptions about when we purchased it to simplify the calculation and the depreciation method, such as maker's depreciation, for example, and then within maker's depreciation, we, we might have the actual method, which is like a double declining half year convention, for example, or possibly a straight line, for example. So it explains how to use this information to figure your depreciation deduction and how to use a general asset account to depreciate a group of properties. Finally, it explains when and how to recapture maker's depreciation. So useful items. So these are items that if you want to dive into more uh, detail about your research, you may want to see publication. 225 Farmer's Tax Guide. Remembering that farming often has a lot of things that are a little bit different. Uh, and that will also be the case with depreciation because farming is, of course, one of those areas where you're doing a lot of investing. So you could have a, a lot of assets. The value of the company could be high, but you're, most of them are going to be sunk in the farm <laughs> itself and the machinery and equipment uh, to run it. And sometimes that machinery and equipment might have more unusual lives than other areas. So that might be a point of specialization for some people to work in. So 463 travel, gift and car expenses, publication 544 sales and other dispose, dispositions of assets. When we sell the assets, that's a whole nother ball game, a whole nother area that we have to deal with, which is linked to depreciation. Because when we sell the assets, we, often, we also have to take them off the books as an asset, which again, we don't have an, a balance sheet on our tax return, but we have the depreciation schedules, which represent balance sheet accounts. We have to take them off the depreciation schedules, which impacts the gain or loss calculations. Publication 551, basis uh, of assets. Publication 587, business use of your home. Obviously, the basis of the assets can be somewhat complicated because that's going to be the basis and adjusted basis as we calculate depreciation, which will have an impact on gain or loss when we sell or dispose of assets. The business use of your home is an interesting area because the home is a personal 
item, but if you use part of the home for business, have a home office, then you might be able to depreciate prop part of it possibly, which gets complex because now you're depreciating part of the home, which could of course have some impact on the basis and so on and so forth uh, as well. So form and instructions. So you've got the form 2106 employee business expenses and form 4562 depreciation and amortization. So your use of either the general uh, depreciation system, which is known as the GDS or the alternative depreciation system, the ADS to depreciate property under makers determines what depreciation method and recovery period you use. So what we're probably going to be defaulting to one or the other, typically the GDS uh, is, is the general idea oftentimes, but we'll get into some of the details of that here. And again, that's going to lead us to certain restrictions in terms of the estimates that we're going to be making, such as the recovery period, how long it's going to be lasting over, and the method that we're going to be used such as like a double declining balance half year convention. So you must generally use GDS unless you are specifically required by law to use ADS or you elect to use ADS. So again, GDS is probably, you know, the default that is basically coming to most people's mind when you're thinking about taxes and depreciation under taxes. So if you place your property in service in 2023, complete part three of form 4562 to report depreciation under makers, complete section B of part three to report depreciation using GDS and complete section C of part three to report depreciation using the ADS. If you placed your property in service before 2023 and are required to file form 4562 report depreciation using either GDS or ADS on line 17 in part three, required use of ADS. So you must use ADS for the following property. So again, this is kind of the unusual one because usually we're, be, we're saying, as we saw here, GDS is kind of the default unless we elect ADS or required to use ADS under certain circumstances. So here, once again, required use of ADS, you must use ADS for the following property. So non-resident real property, residential real property and qualified improvement property held by an electing uh, real property trade or business as defined in section 163J7B of the Internal Revenue Code. For more information, see Revenue Procedure 219-8 uh, on page 347 of the Internal Revenue Bulletin 219-3. You can find that, of course, in the IRS website. Any property with a recovery period of 10 years or more under GDS held by an electing an electing farming business so remember that most property for small businesses is usually going to be under 10 years meaning you've got the three-year property the five-year property the seven-year property the 10-year property uh usually uh so 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 here we have any property with a recovery period of 10 years or more under gds held by an electing farming business as defined in section 163J7C of the Internal Revenue Code. We'll get into, of course, uh, the number of years and so on uh, in future presentations as we dive down into these classes. You can find more information on the IRS website if that exception applies. Any tax-exempt use property, any tax-exempt bond-financed property, all property used predominantly in a farming business and placed in service in any tax year during which, which an election not to apply the uniform capitalization rules to certain farming costs is in effect. Any property imported from a foreign country for which an uh, executive order is in effect because the, the country maintains trade restrictions or engages in other discriminatory acts. Any tangible property used predominantly outside the United States during the tax year. Any listed property used 50% or less and a qualified business uh, use during the tax year. That might be one of the more 
uh, common ones for a small business. We talked about that business use versus personal use. If you you try to keep those two things separate, but if you have a piece of property that you're using for business and for personal, and it goes under that 50%, that could be a situation that changes the depreciation method. Caution, if you are required to use ADS to depreciate your property, you cannot claim any special depreciation allowance discussed in chapter three for the property. So we talked about th those restrictions a little bit before. Remember that the maker's depreciation, which includes the GDS and the, a uh, the ADS, right? We're talking are more of the normal depreciation methods that follow more closely what we would expect to find given generally accepted accounting principles. The 179 deduction and special depreciation are weird in that they're allowing that big deduction up front and uh, so, so, so again, you would expect possibly some exceptions to be in, being able to take that big deduction up front. And so once again, if you are required to use ADS to depreciate your property, you cannot claim any special depreciation allowance, which is that big uh, upfront uh, depreciation. Electing ADS. So now you're going to say we're usually using GDS, but possibly we want to elect the ADS. Not a common thing to do because usually that will result in depreciating less upfront. And usually our general rule for taxes is I want to depreciate sooner rather than later for the most part, although there are exceptions to the rule. For example, if I think this year's income is going to be very low and the next few years incomes are going to be very high, then I might have higher tax brackets in, in the next few years and it might be worthwhile for me to depreciate then, even though uh, I have to delay the, the deduction to, to do that. So although your property may qualify for GDS, you can elect to use ADS. The election must be generally cover all property in the same property class that you placed uh, in service during the year. However, the election for residential rental property and non-residential real property can be made on a property by property basis. So we have some restrictions in terms of, you know, making the election, you can't really generally say, I'm going to have these different pieces of equipment, for example, that I want to depreciate using ADS this one and GDS that one. You got to basically make an election for the property for the year is the general idea. But with uh, prop real property like real estate, you can understand why that that same rule might not apply, given the fact that real estate is basically unique and usually much larger than even other types of depreciable property and therefore possibly you can make the election on a property by property basis even if you bought multiple properties in the same period which would kind of make sense you make the election by completing form 4562 part 3 line 20